there was a certain king who would often, in the company of his chief minister and in disguise, go abroad into his kingdom. And one day, on one of these excursions, they came across an old holy man sitting on the side of the road, his long white beard hanging below his robes, tossing three pe pieces of paper up into the air. So after salutations, King asked the old sage, what are you doing? And the old sage said, I'm asking questions and receiving the answers. And so the king said, well, what are they saying? And the sage said, well, this pe piece of paper tells me that you are the king. And this me that your wife, the queen, has just given birth to a daughter. Oh, the king was amazed. What does the third piece of paper say? And the sage said, oh, it says that nearby a woman has given birth to a son who will be the husband of your daughter. Oh. The king was certainly amazed and demanded to know where was the house of the woman who had so that they could go to find her. So after this had been ascertained, they went off to find this place. But to the king's great horror, this abode was the lowest of the lowest. It was inside a ragged woman lying with her newborn babe beside her. King was affronted. Never, never would I allow my daughter to marry someone the lowest of the low. So the king offered a sum of money to the woman for her child. And she said, how can I give away my own baby? And the king said, if we leave you here, you and your child will surely starve to death. But with this money, you can have other children and take care of them well. So the woman reluctantly gave up her son to the king and his minister. Not far down the road, they came across a mill and the king instructed his minister <coughs> to toss the child in the mill. And that it so happened, the garments of the child caught on a piece of wood jutting out from the side of the mill and when the miller came out, he discovered the babe hanging there. And with delight, he said, at last, I have a son who can help me in the mill. So he adopted the child. Some years passed. And one day the king said to his minister, you remember that old holy man that we met on the road? And you know what I did, gloating and triumphant. And the minister said, all things are possible with the will of God. We cannot avoid our fate. So the king said, let's go and see. And so they went back to the mill. And there was the miller with the young boy, and they asked him, 
whose son is this boy? Miller told the his minister the story. The king of adopted son, but the king offered an amount of money that he couldn't refuse. <coughs> and so the king took the boy. He said, this time I will take care of it myself. And so they came to almost birds, and the king took out his sword and began to beat the boy unmercifully. Finally, the minister said, Sire, you have killed, you have broken everybody. He is dead, leave him. And so they left the boy on the road and departed. Not long after, a horse came along with a physician riding his back on his way to a patient but when they came to the crossroads, the physician's horse refused to go in the direction that the physician was pointing, which was to the way of the house. No matter of beating could make the horse move in the direction he wanted. So finally the physician said, oh, well, all right, then have your head. And the horse turned around and took the other road and not far down the road, the physician came across the studied body of the young boy. Dismounting his horse, he found that there was still a heartbeat. So he took the boy and cared for him until he was healed, and he adopted him and began to teach him the ways of being a physician. Years passed, and one day, when the king was abroad once again in disguise amongst his people, he came to a place where there were a great number milling around, and he asked the people, what are you doing here? And they said, Oh, a famous physician is in town, and we are all seeking his attention and care. But a young man was walking amongst the crowd, handing out numbers. And the king asked, Who is this young man? And the people told the king the story of how this physician had found this boy on the side of the road and brought him back to health. Now just at that moment, a messenger came to the king, calling him for war. But the king stayed to offer a great deal of money to the physician for his son, an amount the physician could not refuse. So having the call to war, the king wrote on a piece of paper, sealed it with his seal, and gave it to the young man and said, take this to my palace, to my minister. And the king went off to war. The young man took the sealed document to the palace, but the palace gates were locked. So, it being the end of the day, and the young man, being tired and hungry, lay down outside the palace gate. Putting the order under his head, so that it would not be lost. 
as it happened, there was a full moon. And the princess came out onto the balcony, unable to sleep, having a restless night, and in the full moon, seeing the young lying in the dust outside the palace gate. And she thought, oh, what is this handsome young man doing lying outside? So she sent a servant out and asked the servant to bring back that which he had under his head. When the servant came back with the piece of paper with the king's seal, she opened it up and it said, Kill the bearer of this letter immediately. The princess was angry. How can my father kill this handsome young man? So she wrote another note, sealed it with the royal seal and sent the servant back to place it under his head. Three years passed and the king came back from war and there waiting at the gate of his palace were three children. The king asked, Who are these children? And the minister said, Why, sire, they are your grandchildren. Who gave permission for my daughter to be married? Why, you did, sire, in the letter that you gave for the young man to deliver. The king called his daughter and asked, and she said, Father, I replaced the letter that you had given to my husband, ordering him to be killed, and replaced it saying, bring this young man to my daughter immediately. She, he is to be her husband, make arrangements for the wedding. So the king thought to himself and said aloud, all things are possible with God. We cannot avoid our fate. And with that, he embraced his grandchildren and his son-in-law. And in due time, this young physician and his princess took over the kingdom. All things are possible with the will of God. We cannot escape, avoid our fate. What does this mean for you now, in this place where we find, after walking this spiritual journey and recognizing that it has been one where all things have been stripped away from us,
leaving us naked, bare, living the moments of life, the past just a dream, the future a misty haze that comes and goes but returns to the moment, the intense moment. And in those moments, our recognizing that with the awareness that comes, selflessness is present. And in that selflessness, there is stillness. How then? do we embrace, understand all things are possible with the will of God. We cannot avoid our destiny, fate, kismet. But what do they mean in the context of a moment that is never-endingly still and present, past and future, constantly coalescing, spinning back into a moment, an intense moment. What is the will of God, kismet, fate, destiny, mean for you now?